Hello, everybody. This is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is uh, April the 12th, uh, 2021. So we're coming on early today because we have new breaking news. I wanted to. Uh, so we're coming on early today because we have. Hold on. <laughs> I wanted to share with you guys, so um, I didn't want to wait till tonight. I got a, a a lot of things going on today, so we're going to go ahead and cover uh, this breaking news that we have coming in. Um, New York Prepper just broke a story a few minutes ago that uh, Russian uh, cities, the Russian government, is now instructing cities to get prepared for mass uh, a mass casualty event, a wartime death. So we're going to cover that and other stories, but uh, also. There's been breaking news that Russia has closed the border with Turkey. They have uh, uh, suspended all uh, airline flights to Turkey, and they have ordered all their uh, Russian citizens to leave Turkey and come back home. Uh, also, NATO <clears throat> will be having an emergency meeting uh, tomorrow, uh, and uh, the ambassador, I guess, to uh, to Ukraine is uh, rushed to Brussels for this meeting. So. They're going to try to invoke some kind of um, Article 15 uh, in NATO that will allow NATO to defend Ukraine uh, in this upcoming war. So it does look like this is uh, beyond repair, that this is going to be going forward. Like I said last uh, night, I don't know when. Could be hours, could be days, maybe even weeks. But President Putin has scheduled a meeting uh, or a speech uh, before his entire country on the 21st of April. That is just about a week away. So uh, I just wanted to uh, to welcome everybody to our channel. If you are new to our channel, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell uh, so that you will be notified for all, uh, all of our breaking news. So um, we've had a couple comments. You know, I just wanted to, to go over this. Um, one guy said on one of his latest comments, I believe you now that you're telling the truth since mainstream news media is finally picking up the story. So people, I've been reporting on this for over three weeks now, and a lot of people think that what I have been reporting is just BS, bullshit, but it's not. This is breaking news. So when you have breaking news, there's only going to be a few news outlets that cover it. And usually the mainstream media, they don't get around to covering the news stories until three or four days, sometime even weeks later. So now that mainstream media is starting to cover this story, oh, everybody's uh, saying, well, now we believe you and you didn't believe me before. Believe me, folks, I don't post fake news. I take a lot of time uh, and effort to get you these stories out, and I don't have time to be doing fake news. So what I'm telling you is the truth. You can count on it. And uh, from all indications that this war is imminent, I don't know when it's going to break out, but when it does, uh, it's not going to be good for the world. We also have some breaking news coming in that China today on Monday has sent 25 uh, fighter aircraft and bombers into Taiwan's airspace. So when this war does break out, it's going to be on multiple fronts. I think China will go after Taiwan, try to invade them. As Russia is entering Ukraine, I don't know about the Middle East, what's going to happen there, but I think there are going to be multiple, multiple fronts on this war. But I did want to give you guys some information. Um, uh, I did a video update uh, probably a couple weeks ago on nuclear war preparations that you need your gas mask and other items. So a lot of people, the gas mask, it seemed like online are sold out. You can't find any NBC gas mask. Uh, anywhere pretty much and the prices are going up. So I wanted to give you a little uh, a little point here that you could do. If you go to Home Depot or Lowell's, they still sell, this is called a paint respirator. Can you see this? They still sell these at Home Depot. Now this, you use this when you're painting. Uh, I'm in the painting business. I paint houses. So I wear this when I'm spraying houses. This is a paint respirator. It has two filters, one on either side. These are like $30 to $40. You can still find them. They don't protect your eyes, but it goes over your head, and it, uh, it protects you from breathing in uh, volatile chemicals from the paint fumes. Now, this is not as good as an NBC um, nuclear chemical biological mask, but something is better than nothing, right? Something is better than – this is better than one of those little um, face that masks that you're wearing now or one of them M95 masks. 
This is called a paint respirator. You can get it at any uh, hardware store. Usually Ace Hardware carries it, Lowell's, Home Depot. Uh, but these run about $30 to $40. And the little filters, um, you have a filter here and then another filter behind that. They pop on the side. But this filters the air uh, from chemical exposure. Uh, when you're spray painting, you don't want to inhale all that, uh, all that paint spray. Uh, when you're spraying with a paint sprayer. So, like I said, check at Home Depot Lowe's. You still have a little bit of time, maybe. Also, get uh, uh, top your gas tanks off in your car. Uh, have you uh, extra water at home. Get some plastic, some rolls of duct tape, just in case you need to take your windows from any kind of fallout if we do get hit. I'm not saying we are, folks. I'm just saying it's always good to pre to be prepared. If you're not prepared, then if something happens, then you're you're, uh, you know, you're not prepared, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's very simple. You know, if you have the items and you don't need them, well, that's good. But if you, if you need the items and the, you don't have them, then it's too late when something happens. So spend an extra, you know, a hundred bucks or so, go to the store this weekend or not this weekend, but this week sometime and uh, see if you can get a few, uh, you know, uh, prep items just in case. Uh, I've been telling you guys to prep for over a year, but it does look like this war is going to be imminent, folks. I don't think there's no backing out. I think Russia has too much invested uh, already, and uh, I think that it's beyond repair. So let's get started. I'm going to read you an article that um, New York Prepper, uh, check out his channel, NY Prepper. Uh, he broke this a few minutes ago, so he did send me the link, so I'm going to read this to you. Uh, According to this report on uh, UA Wire, they're saying that the Russian uh, government has uh, put out a alert to cities, uh, a couple cities in Russia, to be ready for a mass casualty event. That they're going to be uh, have incoming mass casualties from this war coming up. So let me read you a little bit about this. It says regulations on the organization of urgent burial of bodies in wartime began appearing on websites in several Russian cities, underscoring the possibility that Russia is preparing for a large-scale invasion of Ukraine. Russia city councils were instructed to prepare burial sites for those killed during the military campaign. Among these cities is Cherepovets, where the authorities have begun preparing a local cemetery for incoming war dead. Let me keep on reading. Uh, the the municipality statement explains that local agency in case of war will work with the Interior Ministry of Russia to maintain the storage for the bodies, identification, and documentation for the dead. Uh, similar regulations have previously been adopted in uh, Cherkov, uh, Yetin, Yetinburg, and Saul Hakin. I can't pronounce these names. Sorry, folks. These are Russian names. I don't speak Russian. Uh, the commander in chief of the Ukrainian armed forces, Ruskin Komchak, during his speech in the parliament, reported that Russia is amassing troops along the Ukrainian border. Um, last week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, U.S. Army, US Army General Mark Miley, uh, had talks with Valery Gerzimov, the chief of the general staff of the Russian armed forces. It says, we have made it clear that we see threats from Russia and we take them very, very seriously, Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said. Uh, he said that Washington would like Moscow to be more open about their troop movements, while we have learned from the bitter experience not to take face value of Russian statements and their intentions, Kirby said. It says NATO troops in the next few months will hold exercises in Ukraine. The scenario will be to propel, repel a large-scale offense of the armed forces of the Hypopet. You know what I'm talking about, of, of Russian troops. So uh, anyway, this is uh, what New York Prepper has just broke. We're also going to go over a few more stories, uh, what's going on today. So let's go uh, to the article about uh, Russia closing the borders. Hold on. Um, let me see if we got this. So what has happened in the last couple of days is that uh, Russia, uh, not Russia, but Turkey has stabbed Russia in the back. They have signed a bunch of uh, new agreements uh, with uh, Ukraine going uh, against Russia's wishes. And, and Putin and also Sergei Lavrov warned Turkey 
that if they did this, they would uh, face consequences. So today, uh, Russia has closed the borders with Ukraine. They're pulling all their citizens back and they're not letting any uh, new air uh, flights into Turkey. It says Russian Turkish crisis. Crisis. Moscow hits the Turkish economy, closes border with Turkey. Russian citizens must return. All these articles will be in the description box so you can go back and watch. It says door in front of the uh, Tas Sogol was thrown by Moscow, which announced that it is closing the border with Turkey and suspending all flights to Ankara until June 1st, a sign of dissatisfaction with the with the Ukrainian issue and Ankara's involvement. Russian analysts say that although the official excuse is COVID, this is a minor issue. In essence, a pure, purely aggressive move by Moscow is following the Erdogan Zelensky meeting that was held a few days ago. Uh, says Russia is using the uh, economic paper to bring uh, Erdogan and Turkey back on the path it wants in relation to the Ukrainian one. It is no coincidence that Lavrov has pre previously uh, publicly warned Turkey about the situation. It is also noteworthy that Russian the Russian decision was made while the Turkish foreign minister was in Moscow for talks. In fact, in fact, Russia extended the date from May 15th to June 1st with the result that Ankara has lost a large number of Russian tourists and, of course, the foreign exchange uh, that goes with that. So uh, let me click on down. Uh, Russia has suspended flights to Turkey. Deputy Prime Minister uh, Tai Tayano Gokklova I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these foreign names. Recently announced that Russia is suspending all regular flights and charter flights uh, to Turkey from April 15th to June the 1st. We have made a decision to limit both regular and charter flights from Russia to Turkey and vice versa. The interruption starts on April the 15th in a few days and will continue until June the 1st. The only exception will be the flights that will be organized for the return of Russian citizens to the territory of Russia for the construction of the uh, the Ankulia nuclear reactor. Uh, Lavrov warns uh, Turkey. So let me read this. Uh, it says, uh, hold on. He says, as we mentioned a while ago, survey Lavrov was a bulwark against Turkey because of the promises made by Erdogan to his Ukrainian counterpart Zelensky, one of which was the additional sale of Turkish drones to Ukraine. So Russia warned Turkey not to sell these drones to use in this war. It says, we immediately urge all countries that have communication, including Turkey, to analyze the situation and their regime's unrestricted militaristic statements in Kiev. We warn them not to feed these militaristic uh, settlements. So uh, there's there's been threats going back and forth. Uh, I'm going to read you... Uh, uh, an article from Hal Turner had posted, I, I posted a, a short update on this, but now Russia is warning the United States that if they fire their Tomahawk cruise missiles against the Russian Federation forces on the border of Ukraine, that the Russia uh, could sink those Navy destroyers. So let me go ahead and read you this. This is also breaking today. Russia, if U.S. fires cruise missiles from the Black Sea, U.S. Navy ships could be destroyed. So Russia has been warning the United States and NATO for two weeks now, do not get involved in this war or you're going to suffer the consequences. He said the Kremlin, when asked if Russian President Vladimir Putin has anything to say to Ukrainian President, President uh, Vladimir Zelensky, the press secretary of Russia, Dmitry Peskov, responded. He said there is always talk about diffusing tensions and preventing a potential war in Donbass. We hope that political wisdom will prevail in Kiev. Uh, the case will not take a serious turn in provocative actions against Lukanesk and Donetsk will still come to naught. The constant repetition of U.S. calls to Russia to abandon aggressive actions devalues these statements in Washington. A possible appeal of Kiev to the United States to use cruise missiles at Donbass targets will push Russia to recognize the DPR and the LPR with the sus subsequent introduction of Russian peacekeepers 
uh, into the territory. Now, this is the warning right here. In case of the use of cruise missiles from the U.S. destroyers, USS Donald Cook and USS Roosevelt of the U.S. Navy from the Black Sea uh, through the territory of the DPR and the LPR, American warships may be destroyed. Thus, Russia will defend their Russian citizens. Are the Americans ready for this scenario? We believe no. Therefore, despite the enthusiasm of the Ukrainian nationalists, the United States will not openly use its fleet in a potential conflict as this implies a direct clash with the Russian Federation. So this is a statement made by uh, the Russian foreign minister or the spokesman for Russia. Let me see his name again. Uh, Dmitry Peskov. Now, this is uh, breaking news coming in today. So let's keep on going. Let me read you the one about um, uh, the one where they're going to meet with NATO. So hold on. I got to translate this from uh, Greek to English. He said, in conflict five, invocation of Article 15 from NATO. Extraordinary summit NATO. Russia, Ukraine will have a bad end. Turkey should be very careful. So let's read this article. This is also breaking news the last hour or two. An unprecedented savage and public warning was sent by the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, who said that Ukraine will have a bad end and directly warned Turkey of its stance against Russia. But the most worrying development, which shows the deterioration of the situation, is the extraordinary NATO meeting that will take place tomorrow at the request of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, D uh, Dmitro Kulibola, uh, who is leaving for Brussels in a, in a hurry from Ukraine. The meeting will be attended as expected by U.S. Secretary of State uh, Anthony Blinken. So Anthony Blinken from the United States is flying to Brussels, and he'll be there tomorrow for this meeting. So United States is going to be getting involved with this war, folks, and NATO. So this will be a direct confrontation between NATO and Russia. It will be the start of World War III. I really believe this, folks, that this is the war that we've been dreading for the last 50 years, a direct confrontation with Russia. He says, perhaps we are in the top five of the conflict as so far Putin has even refused to talk to the president of Ukraine. However, what the Russian foreign minister said is unprecedented and outside of diplomatic uh, borders. Invocation of Article 15 by Ukraine. So Ukraine is going to try to invoke Article 15 of the NATO convention to get NATO involved in this war. It says, according to the Ukrainian media, the NATO meeting will take place on the initiative of Ukraine under Article 15 of special cooperation between Ukraine and the alliance. So that's what they're going to use to uh, involve NATO. It says NATO members and the Ukrainian foreign minister will discuss the Russian aggression and the security situation along the Russian-Ukraine border and the temporarily occupied Crimea while discussing effective ways to support our territorial integrity and sovereignty. So NATO and the United States is going to protect the Ukrainian uh, sovereignty. That means that they will be going to war with Ukraine. That is my uh, what I'm getting out of this. The Ukrainian foreign minister will also have a private meeting with NATO Secretary General uh, Jen Stalinberg. Article 15 of the NATO-Ukraine partnership provides for the possibility of using an advisory crisis mechanism to conduct joint consultations between Ukraine and the alliance in the event that Ukraine sees an imminent threat to its territorial integrity, political independence, or security. So that's what's going on right now. It has also been reported that U.S. forces are in Ukraine already, our special forces and some NATO officers. Uh, Ukraine cites at least 80,000 Russian soldiers on the Ukrainian border. Survey Lavrov has also said that Ukraine can be dissolved. The Kiev regime could uh, very well be dissolved by reckless actions and end very badly, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said after a meeting with his Egyptian counterpart, uh, Samid Sukri. 
So all these meetings are going on right now behind the scenes uh, before this war uh, breaks out. I'm also going to bring you some news that United States has just sent two uh, C-117s. Uh, let me see if I can find that article uh, to Ukraine in the last 24 hours. Uh, here we go. This is from Sputnik News. All this is breaking news coming in today. Uh, says air traffic trackers show two UF, U.S. Air Force transports arriving in Kiev. The contents are unknown, but we know they're war fighting uh, things. They could even be NATO troops, United States troops. It said the report of aerial activity comes amid the continued escalation of tensions in the civil war torn country of Ukraine, as well as growing fears that the authorities in Kiev may try to take back the breakaway re uh, regions of eastern Ukraine by force. Two U.S. Air Force C-130 Hercules military transport planes, one flying out of Riga, Latvia, and the other one out of Stuttgart, uh, Germany, uh, Army Airfield, have arrived, in, have arrived in Kiev over the past 24 hours. Data from flight tracking services harvested by open source intelligence observers have indicated. So um, they're tracking these flights uh, now from different parts of Europe uh, into Kiev, supplying them with the probably troops and weapons. So I will be posting all these articles. You can go back and look at these articles. So this is breaking news. This is real time. Even though mainstream news media is not reporting on this, this news that I'm bringing you is true. This is not fake news. This is happening right now. I post all my links in the description box so you guys can go back and look at the articles for yourself. He said the flights, missions, and cargo are unknown with the Pentagon giving no indication as to their purpose. The plane's deployment follows OSINT reports from last week indicating that at least three U.S. military aircraft had arrived in Ukraine between April the 2nd and April the 6th, including a Boeing C-17 Globemaster uh, flying from Lou, a western Ukraine, from an air base in the continental United States. And two other planes, a C-130 and a C-17, are making their way to the country from Germany's Ramstein Air Force Base. So NATO and the United States are supplying Ukraine with weapons and possibly even troops are being poured into Ukraine right now. So I do believe that we are maybe either days or uh, could be even hours from this war breaking out. So um, let's go to a no, uh, another article. Um, also, the Chinese and United States are uh, both uh, jockeying uh, in the South China Sea. This is from the war zone. U.S. and Chinese aircraft carrier groups are massing in the South China Sea at the same time. So that's what I'm saying. I, I think I really think that once this war breaks out in Ukraine, that China will invade Taiwan and they're going to be a two front war for NATO and the United States, at least two fronts could possibly be three fronts in the Middle East and possibly four in North Korea, South Korea, if Kim Jong-un decides to invade South Korea at the same time. Folks, we cannot fight all these countries. United States, I think, is unable to fight uh, two or three uh, war fronts at the same time. You know, our country, like, uh, you know, they they uh, been preparing for war, but I don't know if we can fight two superpowers China and Russia at the same time uh, before it goes nuclear. That's the only way that we could do it would be to launch our nuclear weapons on all these countries. So let me read you a little bit about what's going on here. Let me click down to the article. It says, tensions between China and its regional neighbors in the South China Sea and the Philippine Seas increased uh, markedly this week. Naval exercises by both the United States and China have amassed an unusual number of warships in the South China Sea at a time of renewed diplomatic friction as concerns over China's territorial ambitions grow. The uptick began last week. The war zone reported that China's uh, aircraft carrier strike group, the Lalong, uh, maneuvered through the uh, strategic Miyako Strait on Sunday, uh, just south of Okinawa, since then, a separate point of tension between China and the Philippines over a mass of fishing vessels identified as part of China's 
People's Armed Forces Maritime Militia led to a series of heated uh, diplomatic exchanges between Manila, Philippines, and Beijing. So China has also amassed over 200 military uh, ships off the coast of Philippines, I think, for an invasion of the Philippines at the same time. Open source intelligence analysts tracked the movements of the Lelong Carrier Strike Group uh, this week as it appeared to transverse the Luzon Strait, the body of water that along with the uh, Bohai Channel separates the Philippines and Taiwan. So all this stuff is going on right now at the same exact time. Also, uh, China, let me read you that article, has just sent 25 of its warplanes into Taiwan airspace uh, just today. So let me see if I can find that article for you. Uh, let me skim on down. Going to take me just a minute here. All right, this is from Zero Hedge. Zero Hedge is a very good uh, news reporting outlet. Taiwan records the largest ever incursion by Chinese Air Force with 25 planes on Monday. So this is happening today. China has continued its muscle flexing exercises near Taiwan on Monday, this time sending an unprecedented large group of aircraft to breach Taiwan's defense zone. Uh, Taiwan's defense ministry has announced that 25 Chinese Air Force planes entered its airspace today, which included 18 fighter jets uh, escorting four long-range bombers, as this marks the largest ever Chinese aerial incursion since Taiwan began recording and publicly disclosing, disclosing, disclosing the data and follows last month uh, 20 strong Chinese aircraft uh, uh, incursion. So last month, China sent 20 planes. Today, they sent 25 planes. So China is practicing now, I think, on um, bombing runs. And I think this is going to happen, folks. Uh, I don't think this is by coincidence. I think that we're going to have a, uh, a, a very large war coming up in the next uh, few days or maybe in, even in a couple of weeks. I don't have a time frame on this. I'm just reading you the breaking news that's coming in. As it is typical in such aggression, Chinese maneuvers near the island, Taiwan said it scrambled its own jets while also issuing, issuing radio warnings and further its, uh, its military air defenses systems are deployed to monitor all the activity. So that is going on. We have stuff going on in the Middle East. We have uh, uh, Israel sabotaging uh, one of uh, Iran's nuclear uh, plants, the Nantex. Uh, plant the other day shutting that down. Israel and uh, Iran are both uh, hitting each other's uh, container ships with missiles. That's going on. All different kind of crazy stuff. And on top of that, we got volcanoes going off in the Caribbean uh, uh, again. So let me see if I can get this um, get this article. This is from Zero Hedge. Another massive explosion rocks St. Vincent Island in the Caribbean as hot ash rains down on the citizens. He said the La Suvere volcano continues to erupt explosively and has now begun to generate a pyro pyroclastic density currents. Explosions and accompanying ashfall of similar larger magnitude are likely to continue to occur over the next uh, few days, warned St. Vincent's Emergency Management Organization. So that is what's happening. Uh, volcanoes, all all this stuff, all these end time events that seem are happening right now. Uh, let me go to another article. I'm just clicking down here. Now, this is also happening today. Russian Navy warships are practicing eliminating M enemy aircraft over the Black Sea in their drills. This is from TASS, T-A-S-S, -S, Russian news agency coming in today. So the ships of the Shipborne Air Defense Combat Post detected and identified uh, uh, adversary air targets. The aircraft were, uh, were uh, practiced being destroyed by the warship's air defense weapons and as the air objects came within destruction range. So uh, Russia is having ongoing drills in the Black Sea. Like I reported a few days ago, the United States has sent two of our destroyers into the Black Sea. They'll be arriving there in about three days. Now, Russia has warned today 
from the Hal Turner article that if United States launches their Tomahawk cruise missiles against Russian troops in Ukraine, that they will destroy these two American warships, uh, thus uh, starting World War III off. So uh, this is all going on. This is breaking news today. Um, let me uh, let me keep on going. I'm just clicking through this articles to see if I missed anything. Um, so this is also from Sputnik News. Survey Lavrov is now warning the United States once again. Uh, says Survey Lavrov, United States is unwilling to abandon its flawed course toward global dominance. It said the United States is persistent in its line on pursuing global dominance around the world, but this is absolutely counterproductive in the multipolar world, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov told the IRNA news agency today. He said the main problem as we see it, Washington is persistent or unwilling to abandon its flawed course toward upholding the U.S. global dominance, which was adopted in the early 1990s after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Today, it is obvious to everyone that such a policy is entirely counterproductive, particularly given that the objective process of shaping a fair, more democratic, and therefore more sustainable multipolar world order is gaining momentum right before our eyes, Lavrov said in an interview ahead of his visit to Iran. So Sergei Lavrov, he is on a, uh, uh, on a, um, I guess, uh, a meeting that's going to take place in Iran either today or tomorrow. So all these meetings are going on behind the scenes. So I do believe that Iran, that Iran is going to come into play when this war starts. I do believe that there could be possibly three war, front, uh, war fronts in this upcoming world war. And Iran is going to, uh, to take part in this war. Now, Iran, I reported on this also about two weeks ago. Iran said that they, uh, once this war starts, that they will target NATO bases in Europe with Iranian missiles. So we possibly could have three war fronts or maybe four uh, going on at the same time when this world war breaks out. So let me keep on going. I, I think I got maybe one more ar article uh, for you guys. Um, oh, this is also coming in. This is from the Gateway Pundit, the Gateway Pundit. Yesterday, Joe Biden spends his Sunday afternoon in an unscheduled Oval Office meeting with his senior team about Russia and China and their military attacks. So Joe Biden is having uh, a war council with his security council and uh, with uh, Anthony Blinken, these are unscheduled meetings. So this is emergency meetings that they're having in the White House uh, yesterday. So let me read you some of this. Joe Biden reportedly spent Sunday afternoon in an undisclosed meeting in the Oval Office with his senior team, according to White, according to the White House press uh, office. Biden, who is spending a rare weekend at the executive mansion, also had an unscheduled meeting with his senior team on Saturday. So Joe Biden. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, they're having these emergency meetings over Russia and China and the military deployments and the military uh, actions that's going on right now in the world. This is just like that BBC movie, folks, that I posted about a week ago, where the BBC in England, they did a simulated World War III news update. It lasts about an hour, and they simulated what is going on right now, and this is like the movie is being played out. He said the unusual meetings came as Biden's Secretary of State Anthony Blinken warned both Russia and China about military attacks on Ukraine and Taiwan, respectively, in response to threatening mil military maneuvers in recent days. So all this is going on at the same time while Sergei Lavrov is fixing to make uh, an emergency meeting to Iran. Uh, Ukraine is meeting with NATO Tomorrow, and so is Anthony Blinken of the United States is flying to NATO for these emergency meetings going on right now behind the scenes. So like I said, folks, I think we're days or maybe even hours away to this war breaking out. And when it does, you will be witnessing history. We haven't experienced a world war for over 80 years since 1945. 
when uh, the whole world went to war against uh, Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler and the Japanese Imperial uh, Army and Air Force. So you are witnessing history, folks. We've been waiting on this to to uh, to kick off for about 30 or 40 years now. It's been overdue. And it does finally look like that Joe Biden and his Democratic administration is finally going to get World War III started. Aren't you glad that you, uh, a lot of you guys elected Joe Biden as president so we can get this World War III underway uh, to, uh, to bring in the new world order, to bring in the great reset that they've been talking about, folks? Order out of chaos. This is order out of chaos. If anybody knows about the Illuminati, the slogan of the Illuminati is order out of chaos. You have to create chaos in the world before you can come in and restore the world order. So that's what they're instituting right now is the new world order, Agenda 21, the Great Reset, Klaus Schwab of the uh, World Economic Forum, a German gentleman that wants to bring in this Great Reset and restructure the whole world situation. So like I said tonight or last night and every time I do a live broadcast, Jesus Christ is coming back soon, folks. Jesus Christ foretold all this stuff in the Bible. Everything that you see today happening was foretold by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I do want to, um, if I can find it. Let me see if I can even find it here. I had a verse I was going to read to you. In the book of Luke. Let me see if I can find it here. Maybe I don't have it. Well, we'll have to read that to you another day. I thought I had it marked, but uh, I don't have time to look for it. But in the uh, four Gospels, the disciples of Jesus Christ asked Jesus, when shall be the sign of your coming in the end of the world? And Jesus told them about all the events that would happen before his second coming. And wars and rumors of wars are one of these things, earthquakes, volcanoes, a pestilence, famine going around in the world. So we're experiencing the birth pains and the birth pains is going to end at the Battle of Armageddon. But this war coming up right now is not the Battle of Armageddon. It's going to lead to the Battle of Armageddon. This is World War III. What we're going to be experiencing, I think, in the next uh, coming weeks is going to be World War III. And it's going to lead to the Battle of Armageddon. All the pieces are in place right now in the Middle East. China has signed a 25-year agreement with Iran a couple weeks ago. I covered this extensively. I also covered this story back last year in July of last year when this story broke. But China has signed a 25-year agreement with China allowing Chinese troops. Yeah, with Iran. I'm sorry. China has signed a 25-year agreement with Iran to bring in Chinese troops uh, into Iran, also involving Russia. So all the pieces are in place. All the the armies are getting into place for the for the Battle of Armageddon. But when the Battle of Armageddon comes, the United States is gone, folks. We're gone as a superpower because at the Battle of Armageddon, Israel is left alone. They're surrounded by the armies of the world trying to destroy the Jewish nation, the true Jewish people. And the United States is nowhere to be found because I think the United States will be destroyed in this upcoming war that maybe not our whole country, but uh, most of our military bases, most of our fighting forces will be gone at that time. And we will not uh, no longer be a superpower. I think after this war ends, that's fixing to start. Israel is left alone and Jesus Christ comes back and saves Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. And that's when he comes back for the second time. The Bible says that every eye will see him when he comes back in the clouds. And I think that is just a few years away. But we've got to face this war now that's coming up. Time is short, folks. I've been warning people for over a year. All this stuff would be happening. The mark of the beast is here. 
I can't go into that right now. I will be doing videos on that later, but the mark of the beast is here on the earth right now. The Antichrist is here. The Jews have now presented this young rabbi. I think he's about 33 years old. He's paraded them around for everyone to see. A lot of people are saying this is their Jewish Messiah that they've been waiting on for over 3,000 years. All this is coming to pass right before your very eyes. The book of the Bible, the Holy Bible, is coming to life right now before your very eyes. The book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, is being fulfilled right now before your very eyes. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And if you die in this war or you die from a heart attack or a stroke or whatever, and if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to be sent to hell, folks. And I don't want that. God does not want that. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to make your peace with God. No one is promised it tomorrow. Tomorrow is never promised for any man. Tomorrow might be too late for some of you watching this right now. So if you cannot say for 100% that you know in your heart that you would go to heaven and you want to make sure you've got to do a few things, you've got to repent of your sins. The Bible says that there is no salvation outside of repentance. You have to be sorry for your sins. And number two, you have to ask Jesus to forgive your sins and wash them away. Without the blood of Jesus, there can be no salvation, folks. Jesus came to earth to die for the sins of mankind. God sent his son to take all the sins of the entire world and be the ultimate sacrifice, the blood sacrifice that would erase all sins. But you have to accept what he did. You have to acknowledge that he was the son of God. You have to acknowledge that he rose again and is alive today. So if you want to do that, if you want to be born again, what the Christians call being born again, being saved, Say this prayer and be honest with God. Just say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the son of God. And I do believe that you did die on that cross and that you shed your blood for me. And that you rose again on the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a second chance. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. Your name has now been written into the book of life. No one can enter heaven unless their name is written in the book of life. That's probably the best decision you would ever make, folks, because our life here. On earth is a short life, folks. Even if you live to 70, 80, 100 years, what is that in the, uh, in the span of eternity? Eternity lasts forever. Once you die, then you're going to have a whole nother life. It's either going to be in heaven or hell. Our life here is a temporary. It's temporary on the earth. God puts you here on earth to find out who you're going to serve. This is your test. This is your final exam on this earth. Who will you choose to serve? Will you choose to serve Jesus Christ? Or will you cho choose to serve Satan and the world and the lust of the flesh? That's what God wants to know. The Bible says that there's going to be very few in heaven because most people is going to choose the world. They're going to choose money, riches, sex, the pleasures of this world can offer, but then their soul is going to be tormented in hell forever because they choose, they chose Satan. They chose the mark of the beast. They didn't trust God 100%. Time is running out for the world. Once a person receives the mark of the beast, which is going around the world right now, they can never be saved, folks. Their soul is doomed forever. The Bible says that there's two sins 
that can ever be forgiven. One taking the mark of the beast, the other is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And you've got to be ready. We need to be ready. So I want to thank everybody for showing up. Um, share our videos out, folks. Uh, if there's one thing that you can do to support our channel is share our videos out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, whatever you can do, folks. These people need people in the world need to hear this breaking news. They need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Time is running out, folks. Let me tell them if you're afraid to to say the name of Jesus, if you don't want to preach to them, let me preach to them, folks. I'll tell them I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. They need to hear this information. And uh, there's only a little bit of time to get it out. So God bless you guys. Thank you for showing up. I'm going to go ahead and, and get all these uh, video uh, links and all these article links uploaded. It's going to take me about 15 minutes to do that. But thank you guys for showing up again. And like I said, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught without him. So we'll see you later. If there's any more breaking news, we'll try to break in and uh, and bring it to you. Bye-bye.